I am the Pope in question. My name is May Lynn. I am the founder of the Church of Ed Wood, which is an actual thing worth a Google. It is episode, I have no freaking idea, 442 of the podcast. And you know what that means? That means that there have been 441 episodes before this one. Don't check or do the math on that. This is an exciting episode of the podcast we're going to be talking about uh jordan peel elon musk medicinal meat and our movie this week is everything everywhere all at once and we're gonna it's 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 gonna get deep we're gonna get deep into it deep so uh yeah let's do this well, you just got me wet. Ew, 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 Eleanor. Ew. My um, six-year-old has been doing their own makeup. This is more of a visual thing, which is funny because podcasting. You're a zombie? Yeah. Yeah, you, you look really frightening. I'm Frankenstein. Oh, you're a Frankenstein zombie. That That's like saying I'm a mummy werewolf. I don't even know how a Frankenstein zombie would work. Like you kill Frankenstein and then he comes back as a zombie. Would he be zombies? Because he is like parts of a different. Bees? No. Uh, yes. Zombies bees. come back to life because bees go into their dead body and start moving them around like the bugs inside of Oogie Boogie. Oogie Boogie. Yeah. So uh, there you go. Fun fact. The more you know. Do, do, do. Okay. Move. Thank you. Party. I have thought of this so many times. A, a were rabbit. Would the were rabbit be ravenous for the food that rabbits eat, or would they be for brains? And if they are for brains, are they killing human brains? Are they are they eating other rabbits' brains? It it I I have always thought about that. You know what if what if uh it, could a vampire ostensibly Make his dog into a vampire. I think it could be possible to have a, a vampire dog. A dog pyre. Yeah. Funny. Being a liberal is so freaking exhausting. For reals, though, it's so exhausting fighting evil all the time, 24-7. I'm so tired. I wish I had money. I wish I had, like, a bunch of money so I could be one of those, uh... I could just be a Disney adult who only cares about one monolithic corporation above all else. You know? Like, gee, Washington, D.C. is on fire and democracy is in shambles as our once great free nation slowly slides into a nightmarish, violent third world banana republic hellscape. But who cares? Because I'm in line to meet Clarabelle Cow. And I just bought a churro. Like, oh, I don't really pay attention to politics. That's privilege because they haven't come for you yet. So it's very exhausting exasperating and people make fun of disney adults because oh look at these adults all they care about is one corporation that's stupid anyway i'm gonna put on my new york jets hat my new york jets shirt my new york jets jacket and go talk to my friends about the new york jets like that's kind of sort of the same thing it's just a different corporation you know but it's but it's kind of sort of the same thing. Uh, being a Democrat means fighting a never ending fight against evil and idiots with guns and having your guard up. Yeah. 
yeah, that's another big part of it. Like Republicans are like, Democrats stole this election. So much fraud on a massive scale. And it's like, okay, you're forgetting something. In order for Democrats to steal the election, they'd have to be good at something. So you're giving us way too much credit. It's like that one episode of The Simpsons where they're like, oh, Homer, he is a mastermind in negotiations. No, he's just an idiot. Yeah. There are real reasons to hate the Democratic Party <laughs> without making up a bizarre fiction where Tom Hanks is like, ha, huh, remember when I was in uh, the Burbs? That was amazing. Uh, hey, honey, can you go to the fridge and get me a baby? He's going to bite into that thing like a crisp uh, uh, apple, like a crisp red apple. Yeah, two straws, two straws for the babies. Uh, so, like, being a Democrat, being a liberal, you've got to have your guard up constantly. And it can be really draining. And, and I should know because I'm a pansexual, trans, Latina, Democrat living in the freaking Bible Belt. I'm lucky to be alive right now. You know? Yeah, so now a uh, new midterm election just went down and um, I, I'm kind of mixed feelings about it because on one hand, like, okay, I understand this is a success for Democrats because the party in power always loses during the midterms. And this time things are pretty much going to be the same or uh, Democrats are going to be slightly ahead and so that's good and that's a positive thing and you see all these people yes young people young people came out in full force and saved us and it's like oh yeah and also latinos voted in record numbers yes young people really helped us young people and women came out in full force and latinos voted uh, more in a midterm than they ever had yes women young people are heroes and it's like, OK, not even going to mention blacks, just, yep, young, young whites and women. That's it. They saved everything. But it's like enough trans hating, violent election deniers won that me as a pansexual, trans, democratic, left wing trash Latina. Uh, enough election denying transphobes won that I'm still it, a lot of trans people woke up the day after the, after the election and it's like okay it's good news for a lot of people but it still sucks for us the only th it, trans people right now are just uh, hey the election's gone and a lot of times Republicans stop their BS so so a lot of trans people are just like Please stop giving a crap about us. Yeah. Because you do do that, you know? That does happen. Like, oh, look at that. It's after the election. Suddenly, the caravan of migrants isn't a problem anymore. No. No. So, yeah, it's still pretty bad for trans people in America and... Uh, there's a bunch. There's still a bunch of angry armed nutsos wandering our streets with assault rep weapons and tiny dicks looking to start a war. And so, this is an introduction to the monologue. Which way? This way. That's that's where the sign is. Okay. This yes. is an introduction about American politics, which sets up the real monologue, which is, I just don't want to talk about politics. I'm just so tired. 
I don't want to talk about politics and the midterms and how our entire nation is a failed capitalist state. I'm just tired. Let's just drop the politics and talk about anything else. It's, well, first, it's hard not to talk about politics, but it's also hard to take politics seriously. Like, you can't beat Herschel Walker, really? Yeah. You, you can't, you, you just can't pull out a victory. The man has clearly hit his head way, way too many times. The problem you're not able a- to win here. I have a big problem with Herschel Walker because he is absolutely out of his mind and he is incredibly ignorant and he knows nothing about politics and he's just basically like a parrot that the right has just randomly chosen. But at the same time, a lot of people's attacks on him, I'm like on the edge of my seat, like, oh man, this guy's an idiot. He's Probably, maybe he got hit in the head too much, and I'm like, he is a former football player. You're getting into some uncomfortable territory here. We can make fun of Herschel Walker without um, making fun of people with legitimate brain trauma. And they're like, oh man, this guy's this guy's totally an idiot. He can barely speak. And I'm like, oh, he's also black. You're sounding kind of offensive. Somebody with serious brain trauma should not be running for political office because they have brain trauma. Yeah, this is the this is what Trump hath wrought on the Republican Party because I heard someone on some TV show mention this that like it, it, Democrats were trying to solve problems. Republicans is like a angertainment mm-hmm. where now a, the majority of the Republican Party has realized that in order to win votes and curry the favor of Republican voters and stay in power, they've got to be in a hole and do a good Trump impression. And you just see these people just fawning over backwards. It's like the four years after Pulp Fiction came out. Okay. And suddenly here are all these movies. Oh, look at this. Things to do in Denver when you're dead. We know what movie you're trying to be. Suddenly Ed, all of these politicians are trying to be Trump like uh, like uh, <laughs> Suicide Kings and Destiny turns on the radio. Yes. And it's just sad to see all of these politicians that are just like, okay, it, like uh, politicians realize that they just need to be angry and kind of racist and dicks because that's what Republicans want. And it's kind of sad. And, you know, hopefully with these midterms that the red wave didn't happen, that, okay, maybe here's just a thought. Republicans can actually find politicians that are good and have issues. But who effing knows at this point? It, 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 we, we are in a world where a civil war could break out at any second. And it's weird because I've talked about this before on the podcast. God, yeah. I have mentioned this before, but it, it, there is a good chance that like, if you told me, oh, tomorrow a civil war is going to break out, I'd be like, yeah, yep, par for the course. Not surprised. At all. Period. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I just want to... Let's talk about Weird Al, Bunny! Weird Al. Fucking Weird Al! That movie that made movie me legitimately cry. Awesome. That movie made me legitimately cry. Yeah. Weird, the Al Yankovic story. Because when I was a kid... My my older brother, such a D-bag to me. He was all like, oh, I'm listening to Judas Priest. I'm listening to heavy metal. Oh, I'm into Metallica. No one's into Metallica now in the 80s. Yeah. A- and, and it's like, oh, what music do you like? What music do you like? And I'm like, 
I like Weird Al Yankovic. Psh, Weird Al Yankovic. They're lame. They'll never be as cool as Megadeth, who will be around have, making hits forever. And it's just fascinating to think that, like, the first album I bought was Weird Al in 3D when I was, like, in fourth grade. And now here I am, a very, 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 very early 40s yes. person watching the Weird Al Yankovic movie with his kids. Yes. You know? That's fascinating to me. And it, it moved me. It moved me because it's like, wow, look at the look at the 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 history of this man. Look at the fake history of this man. And and I was worried when I saw the previews, the first previews for Weird, the Al Yankovic story, because it's like, on one hand, this just looks like Rock Hard. On the other hand, I effing love Rock uh, Walk Hard. Yeah. So that'd be a good double feature. Walk hard and weird. It totally would. Or Elvis and weird. I think that would also be an equally fun. And and many write ups and things like that that I saw gave Walk Hard its just due. Good, because you know, that yeah. bombed in the box office, and yeah. that was a damn shame because that movie is wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Yeah. Oh, but I love that movie. I love that movie so much. Weird, the Al Yankovic story. And I'm going to mention this later in the podcast when we get to this week's movie, Everything Everywhere All at Once. But I love the movie, Everything Everywhere All at Once. And it also has been pissing me off all year because there are movies that could ostensibly be my favorite movie of the year if it wasn't for Everything Everywhere All at Once. That, like, oh, Weird Al Yankovic could be in the top two if it wasn't for everything everywhere all at once. So Weird Al Yankovic has to get pushed down a little bit. Yes. Marcel the Shell with Shoes On. Really? It is a, it's an A24 film that's PG, that's for kids. It is adorable and lovely, and I love it. And I want to hold it until it falls asleep in my arms. It is adorable. See, and this is what I this is what I find interesting. I'm gonna go light on the interest, but like, like we have this huge ass juggernaut Disney, mm -hmm. you know, that is basically absorbing anything. I mean, Sony with Spider Man. What the fuck are they? But Disney Junior, you know. <laughs> Disney Junior. And and Where the magic Warner is. is going to try to catch up by doing the same thing that Disney does. Although I read a, a, an interesting uh, oh. release from Warner where Warner was like, okay, well, there's Marvel, but then we have DC, but we have games and we have everything else and they listed just a whole bunch of things that warner has its hands in and they're like we're okay <laughs> you know but you know but, what I, yeah. but see but see here's the thing everybody bitches about disney mm -hmm. but a24 proves that you can still find a niche yeah you could yeah. still find and fucking thank God, because, like, I mean, I love the Marvel movies, but you do need some kind of alternative entertainment sometimes. Yeah. You know, so and you can, A24 you can... is right there with weird shit. Yeah. it And it, it's also, it's it's weird. It's so much weird shit that it's a good, like a, like a palate cleanser. So it's like, oh, I just watched... Guardians of the Galaxy 2. And then I watched Infinity War. And then I watched Endgame. And it's like, whew, I'm exhausted. Well, put on the lighthouse. Yes. Clear that palette right off. The fascinating thing about Warner Brothers is that uh, now uh, James Gunn is, the, is one of the Kevin Feige's who will be in charge of the DC Cinematic Universe. 
And and what people aren't mentioning, I haven't seen this on any websites or anybody talking, but like, holy shit, they give they gave the reins to the entire DC universe, cinematic universe, to the guy who made Brightburn. Yes. Yes. That is freaking fascinating. And it, it, oh my god, like like James Gunn made a violent, gory Superman parody, and DC and Warner Brothers said, "Give that man all of our characters." Yeah. <laughs> it's like, hey, wow, okay. It's like if they didn't get James Gunn, they would have got the guy who created Supernatural and then went on to do The Boys. Yes. Eric Kripke. How do I know that? It has to be because of my wife and her obsession with Supernatural. Anywho. Uh, where, what were we talking about? Weird Al. I love that freaking movie. I'm trying to force everybody to watch it. In yes. the house, it is so good. I'm surprised because someone like I was watching it the the morning it came out. I I watched it, and someone said, "Hey, is it is it good for my kids?" I've got like my my six year old, my five year old here. Is it okay for kids? And I'm like, there's a lot of drugs and drinking, and a surprising amount of people are killed by Weird Al Yankovic. Yes. Including a very gory scene with some c- CDs. Yes. So I, it's weird because this is a biography of Weirdo Yankovic, but I'm not sure <laughs> if it is okay for your five year old to watch. That's kind of a toss up. That was surprising to me. But I, I, I'm like proud of the Roku channel. Yes, like the fucking Roku channel. I am. You know? I am proud of the Roku channel. You know, you have you have Apple Plus getting in there, and yep. it's getting its feet wet with new content and things like that. And you know, Amazon has been doing it for a while with Amazon Prime and its original content and 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 all that. And Roku, with its debut, just knocks it so far out of the <laughs> fucking park. Yeah. And this is like their first original movie. It's freaking great. Yeah. It is so good. It's so surprising. So surprising. Good for you, Roku. You yeah, know what I'd like to see? It's kind of funny, because like, well, well, I have always been a Roku enthusiast. Uh... There was a moment where I was like, huh, maybe I should. It, has Bunny? Does I wonder if 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 I should send Bunny a copy of the movie. Oh, it's a Roku film. Never mind. Never yeah. mind. He's yeah. got access. So, right. I, I, and I'm all set up. I'm like, so I just go over to the Roku channel and there it is. I'm like, holy shit. And I watch the movie and then I'm like, uh, well, you know, I'm like never on the Roku channel. Let's get a look around and see what else they have. They have shit. <laughs> yeah. They have like nothing. Yeah. You know, they have like flipping outhouses, you know, like we're going to redo this outhouse and flip it for a lot of money. You know, things like that. Yeah. The Roku channel, except for this amazing, amazing Weird Al movie, the Roku channel, it is SCTV. Yeah. <laughs> SCTV. The I Roku miss- channel would know where the chicory dump is. I remember when I was a kid growing up, radio stations would just play. In Phoenix, Arizona, it would be a regular occurrence for some random radio station in 1987 to just play Bob and Doug McKenzie's 12 Days of Christmas. Oh, God. 
or uh, Cheech and Chong, Santa Claus and his old lady. You won't hear that on the radio anymore. No. But back in the day, you would. I am so upset that here I am in my very, 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 very early 40s, and yet I am still hearing Grandma got run over by a reindeer. I thought for sure, I'm going to grow up and that's going to disappear like the music of Ray Stevens. Well, you don't like you don't hear the streak anymore, but dang it. Grandma got run over by a reindeer is still out there. That's that's how I felt about Madonna. <laughs> Madonna. I I still think she's just a flash in the pan. Yeah. She's just taken a really really <clears throat> really long time to flash. That's all. Here's a, that's not here's on a, me. That's on her. It's all her fault. Here's something that I thought up when you were talking about uh, the Roku channel. This will be the second holiday season in which no Charlie Brown holiday specials will air on regular TV. I am upset about this. I am hurt about this. And I say, so now if you want to watch a Charlie Brown Thanksgiving, a Charlie Brown Christmas, uh, it's the Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown, you have to. Thank you. You have to go on Apple TV. And I just think, you know, it'd be really funny. Hey, Tubi. Go buy Rudolph. Yeah. You know, what other what other classic specials can be bought by other streaming services? Oh, look at this. Um, uh, hey, hey, Pluto TV. Maybe you can buy the rights to the Garfield Halloween special. Yes. Yes. Or yes. something like that. Funny, I, I was talking with my uh, lovely uh, wife the other day. We both went to Target and we were super high and it was so much fun. Remember when TVs were thick boys? Thick? Remember, yeah, remember when TVs were thick boys? Oh, Every God. TV looked like freaking uh king kong bundy now every tv looks like uh timothy chalamet and, and, a, and a typical and a typical 25 inch television which is relatively small now those were the big televisions yeah because that was the biggest you could build a television and still be able to lift yeah and, and that and, fucker it, had to be close to 100 pounds yeah, they were heavy. They were huge. I like my ladies the same way I like my TVs. Damn it, Thick, hard to carry and covered in lines. And little knobs you can play with. You know what's... Cr oh, 10-minute warning. Look at that. Yes. Uh, it's crazy to think that... Uh, my kids don't know who Gilligan is. They don't? Where are they going to see Gilligan's Island? It's just fascinating to me. And my kids like, 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 I, oh, hey, look at me. I'm in the kitchen. I'm making dinner and I'm cook. I'm browning up some meat and I've got my nicest dress on and I've got an apron on. Look at me all Donna Reed. My kids don't fucking know what that is. Well, I, I'm really kind of fascinated by that whole topic, by a lot of yeah, a, a lot of things like it. Like we we would say "kaching," and we all know what that means. <laughs> yeah, we all know what that means. We all know what that that's about. When the fuck is the last time a cash register ever actually made the "kaching" sound? Yeah. Like even like, when I was a kid, they went uh, like I might be the last person who actually heard it, but like yeah. even when I was a kid, they went electronic and they started beeping. Yeah, it, it, it's funny you should mention that because I, I I had a job interview uh, a a few days ago and it went so well that when I came into the house, I immediately went like oh and and did like an x chop yes. near my genital area like i'm a member of dx yes and it's like wow that's 1999 
that was that's like something that people would would understand from fucking 23 years ago it's just fascinating to me they're like dang kid my kids don't know that yeah let alone know who the bonds is no. fascinating that like like there when i grew up like born in the late 70s raised in the 80s became a teenager in the 90s drinking in the 2000s like gilligan's island was just everywhere it was on all the time everywhere and i've been thinking about gilligan's island a lot lately i think i mentioned it a few episodes back it was only on for three seasons yeah less than a hundred episodes how was it everywhere it was all of the time on tv i i i'm blown away by this i'm blown away by this remember that wrong way pilot what was his name Wrong way. Was was he Rongo Star or was that F Troop? I think that was F Troop. Uh, wrong way something. And it was like this old guy and he was a pilot and he got marooned in Gilligan's Island. And, oh, and the Headhunters. Yes. I was always excited when there was a Headhunters episode. Uh, it played nonstop for like three decades and now I don't even know where I could find Gilligan's Island anywhere. Uh, Sure, at the bargain bin at Walmart. At the bargain bin at Walmart. So, Bonnie, I saw Black Panther 2 just a few days oh, ago. It, it was quite surprising. Let me tell you about it. So, Val Kilmer is now a commander in the army, and he keeps saving Tom Cruise's career. Yeah. And so, he destroy. he's a test pilot now. He destroys this ship, and they want to get rid of him. But yeah. Iceman yeah. is all like, no, I'm going to send you to a base in San Diego. And oh, who's here? Oh, the son of Tom Cruise's dead pilot. Oh, drama. But that's Conflict. only because he's got to save the little baby fairy princess. Yeah, and Jennifer Connolly is With in the movie. With his best friend, the Peck. Yeah, the Peck. We're afraid. I can't believe that Willow is coming back. I know. I'm. I'm gonna watch it just out of curiosity. That that is fascinating to me. Jennifer Connelly is in is the love interest in Black Panther 2. They got her instead of Kelly McGillis. Yeah. And let me tell you why they didn't get Kelly McGillis. As a proud woman, she has aged naturally, unlike Tom freaking Cruise. Yes. Who is 60 years old and yet still looks like a 29-year-old impish elf. Okay, but see, but see, that would still work because she looked older than him back then. That is a good point. That is a good point. It did kind of look like do 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 a little bit. Like one of the major problems I had with the original movie It was like, what the fuck are you doing with this rippy little ass kid? Yeah. And also, Wikipedia says that Top Gun Maverick is the second installment of the Top Gun film series. Bitch, there's two movies. I don't know if I would automatically start saying it's like the Saw franchise. Yeah. I saw this YouTube video the other day, and it's this exasperated woman in the thumbnail, like, and the title says, I watched every Jordan Peele film. Bitch, there's three. Yeah. There are three. That's that's like me saying, oh, I watched every film Tom Green wrote. Yeah, you just watched Freddy Got Fingered. I, I have not been able to get through Nope yet. I have I have tried. I, I think falling asleep. I find it really pretty fascinating and a lot of fascinating ideas in it. But I start watching it and it's like it's on my top 10, and I absolutely love it, but I can see why people have a problem with it. The thing is, is that Jordan Peele did Get Out, and it is a wonderful horror movie, and then his follow-up, Us, is also a very good horror movie, and I love Us even more than I like Get Out. I love Us, especially since it's set, a, a lot of it is set at the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk, which I have gone to a number of times, and it's exciting to watch a horror movie. Like, I'm never going to go to, like, the Midsommar location, yeah. but I have been to where Us is. 
So then, you know, the marketing people said, Jordan Peele, the master of horror, brings us his latest chiller. That's not a horror. Nope is not a horror movie. It's a science fiction film yeah. about two people who will do anything for fame, including put a bunch of people's lives in danger. I freaking love the movie, but also I can see why a lot of people came out of that like, oh, that isn't what I thought it was going to be. And I'm like, yeah, this is basically like Jordan Peele's attempt to make like a an interesting black led War of the Worlds type of film. And I really like it and I appreciate it, but it's not scary. It's not a horror movie like they all said it was going to be. Yeah, yeah. I, I find the whole. Chimp going berserk. This is the beginning of the movie, so this ain't spoiling nope. anything. Nope. The chimp going berserk during the situation comedy. Fascinating. Yes. And the whole scene where the kid's under the table. Ah, oh, love that. I love that guy from uh, Walking Dead. And Glenn, I think you yeah. should leave with Tim Robinson. Steve, Stephen Hewn. I love him in that movie. He is he blew me away in that movie. Like, oh, yeah. Stephen Yoon's in this movie, but he oh you did a great job. Man, nope has Stephen Yoon from I think you should from I think you should leave with Tim Robinson. Bodies, 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 which is a really good horror movie. Uh has uh the guy who owns the who is scamming adults into thinking they're superstars in I think you should leave with Tim Robinson. And uh, this week's movie, Everything Everywhere All at Once, has Santa Claus from Two Skip. And I think you should leave with Tim Robinson. It's an I think you should leave year. Uh huh. Is what I'm saying. It's sweeping. It's sweeping every part of Hollywood. Oh, and that movie with, uh, with, uh, uh, what's her name from Speed? Why am I automatically going to the movie Speed? For her. Sandra Bullock. Sandra Bullock. Uh, she did that movie, The Lost City. Uh, Patty Harrison was in that. Oh, The Lost From, City was fucking leave. horrible. It horrible. There, the end credit scene made absolutely no sense. I but, didn't make okay. it to the end credit scene. Yeah, it. Yeah. But anyway, we're about to be cut off from Zoom, so we're going to take a short break. This has been a this was a very fun uh, and easy uh, podcast. I like just winging it. I like winging the monologue. Uh, we're going to take a short break and come back with Steve's historical approximations. We are going to be talking about medicinal meat. Okay. <laughs> 